Shark Motorsport officially launched the first facelift of the Amakua for sales at the end of 1949. For a brief moment in time, about one week, they held the world record of top speed, 180 miles an hour, or 290 kilometers per hour. This is before Dotmer Velocity came out with their 241 mile per hour car that destroyed the Amakua. Shortly after that, the Razo company came out with a 285 mile per hour car that left everyone in their dust. The good news for Shark Motorsport is that they're making a slight profit. Very slight, but they are selling out of their cars, meaning there is high demand for them. And the future is looking pretty good. Bad news is they're behind in technology. The engine sizes that the competition came out with, they just can't compete with. They don't have enough money or time to come out with a new engine or even revise their engine to compete in the next decade. What Shark Motorsport decided to do was take what they had and make the best possible version of it. They were determined to keep going, to advance their technology, to one day be able to compete with Dotmer and Razo. So the long-term goal is still there. One day, Shark Motorsport is determined to have the fastest car in the world, even if they can't always have that title. This started with the first facelifts in 1950. With money tight, they decided not to revise the engine. Slight revisions were made to the cars, mostly to reduce costs. The other main reason for this very quick update was the opening of Delua. So the Delua market was open for Shark Motorsport, but they had to re-engineer slightly the car to be able to sell it to Delua customers to meet all the safety and rules uh, that the Delua government had set forth. After the minor facelift launched, as you can see, Shark Motorsport ran into some financial issues. Cash at basically zero, not making any money, a uh, company value of only 14 million. Had a good credit rating, but that's, those are some very, very scary numbers. We were still selling around 48 cars per month, but we can make around 60. So that's not, that's not good. Um, decisions had to be made whether it was cutting prices or increasing marketing. So everything had to be looked at. Uh, after going over the numbers, the, the marketing, we weren't putting a lot into it, but it, it's hard to put more into marketing when you have no money. We did realize we were putting a little too much into research. Um, not that we're putting a ton into it, and we thought we had to. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to hit DCOE, we're trying to get the drivetrain, the wheels, you know, radial tires is huge. All this stuff was a big factor, but costs a lot of money for a company that's losing money. So this all had to be cut back for the next facelift. After about a year went by, things started to improve slowly for Shark Motorsport. Despite the economy not doing much, kind of going up and down here, uh, sales picked up with the increase in Delua really helping to the point where we were selling out everything we could make and were able to increase the price slightly, which is the opposite of what we were originally considering, which was decreasing the price. So the combination of extra sales plus the higher price allowed us to keep the research where it was and actually increase the marketing budget. So this put us in a very good position going forward. We're still not making money, which is fine because we don't have to pay taxes then. So now that we're at a stronger position, we decided to do a minor facelift to the engine to get it started for the 1960 release. So let's go into the ocean. Now briefly going over these engines as they are just the minor facelifted ones, we were able to increase the 5.0 liter to 300 horsepower, 315 torque. This was a very minor increase over what we had, but it was able to get uh, more so than the power and everything to get these numbers 
to where we wanted them. Um, so we were able to increase the tooling to increase our capacity, how, how many engines we can make them on. Our cost went down a little bit on the engines, which is also helpful. And most importantly, we got the DCOE in there, uh, which in the long run is gonna help us with better performing engines. For the 1956 facelift, a lot more changes were made to the actual car, to the Amakua trims. Uh, as you can see, we added a new version and increased our capacity greatly. Uh, now, one negative thing, you can see we sold over 150 cars right off the bat here and only made 113. We had a little issue with uh, factory shifts. So as, as we sim on, this is going to get back up to 2.2, 2.3, and this should be, we should be producing right about what we need to. Uh, and hopefully this negative number will also turn positive with the extra cars we're going to produce. Because uh, we are making some decent money right now. We did. We increased our marketing budget fourfold. We were spending about 150 to 200 thousand a month. We are now spending almost a million dollars a month. We might have to cut this back a little bit, but we want to be aggressive early on and get as many customers as we can. Uh, loan repayment. This is hurting. You know, it's only 550 thousand, but when you're a small company not making a lot of money, that hurts. Uh, research. We increased a little bit. We still don't have a lot to put into it. Uh, and this, this does put us behind some of our competition. So we had to do some rebranding. Uh, we saw the sales of the Roadster were far and away above the coupe. Um, and it made sense. It was the more practical car. It wasn't the extreme. It was cheaper. But we wanted to sell more cars. So what we decided to do was we took the coupe the base model coupe that we had been selling and put the same engine that the Roadster had into the coupe, the 3.6 liter V12. Uh, this made it lower production cost, we were able to sell it for less and hopefully increase the sales a lot more. Then we created the sub-brand of the Coupe S. So threw a few extra badges on there, called it a day. Uh, no, we, we, we changed the color too, uh, that, that was a huge step. We, uh, Put Shark Motorsport Blue on there, some gray leather interior, threw the S badges on it, um, you know, and, and put the updated Ocean 5 liter engine into it. So production did pick up rather quickly. Just a month later, we're up to the two shifts that we really need. Sound about 155 cars, delivered 168. It did bring the finances more in line with what we were hoping. We still lost $200,000, uh, but you can see we can easily cut that um, between research and marketing. If things get really bad, we can cut that and hopefully be making some more money again. Company value, though, is kind of scary, $11.6 The reason for the decrease in this is another engine facelift. So this engine facelift, sorry, I kept going back and forth with the names between Hammerhead and Ocean. Uh, you know, because it's a very important thing in a company, the name of your engine. So this facelift, we decided to do a longer facelift going all the way through 1959. So this is going to be the engine that the final Amakua for its 1960 record-breaking speed will launch with. We upgraded the base engine to a 3.8 liter from the 3.6. We increased the horsepower slightly to 200 with 227 torque. The, the engine that matters, the 5 liter engine, this this was a gigantic improvement. We were at 295 horsepower for the 1950 launch, and then we you know, slowly increased that to like 300 for the first facelift. Well this is the same engine, the same engine that we started with, and we got it up to 570 horsepower. Let's take a look at what we did. So as you can see, we went as extreme as, as we were able to on this engine. We increased the cam profile to 100, springs and lifters at 86, compression at 9.9, .9, RPM to 8700. Uh, you know, we have the DCOE in it now, six carburetors, race intake. 
we went to Avgas because we can now sell to Dulua. So the bad part about this is for this engine, we can only sell it to Dulua. Nobody else is going to be able to buy it, which is where the other two trims will help us out with the sales because that is using, I think, premium leaded 93 octane. Have tubular race exhaust, no mufflers, 570 horsepower out of a naturally aspirated 5.0 liter engine in 1956. 350 torque, some pretty even numbers. facelift is not going to take as long as the engine did. Uh, normally you like to do them together just for production numbers. You know, if you can produce 250 engines, you want to produce about 250 cars. Uh, if you produce less cars, you're fine. But you don't want to be able to produce 300 cars and think you're going to sell 300 cars if you can only make 200 engines. Uh, you either won't make enough or you will be really pushing your engine factory. Now we get to the Amakua facelift. As you can see, we let about almost two years pass before doing this. Uh, we, we did wait for these solid disc brakes as this would be a huge help uh, to stop the car. We are selling the models quite well. Um, you know, we're making decent money here, but we're still struggling financially. Uh, as you can see, we still have less than a million dollars. We're still breaking even. Uh, our research is about the same as it was. Our marketing, we had a lower. We were $800,000, $900,000. We were losing too much money. And we couldn't, with the company value dropping below 10 million, C minus credit now, we couldn't afford to keep that level of marketing going. Uh, the good news is we're two years away from a pretty major refresh of, uh, of the car here. So we're hoping that saves us. Quick rundown of our two base models now, the Coupe and the Roadster. Uh, as you can see, the desirability score in Sport is 240. And the reason it's Sport, uh, not only because it's the best matching category, but in 1958, there's not much else. GT, if there is any, is very small. There is no supercar, hypercar yet. For the convertible, it's convertible sport. Again, 305% desirability. So we're really hoping that these cars help our company take off. Uh, they have the 200 horsepower engines. Here, you know, the drivability scores and all that. Not bad. Prestige, pretty good for its time. 38, 39 for the, uh, for the Roadster. Not much changed since the first video. Well, nothing changed on its looks. So now, our, our top model here, the Coupe S. This is the one we shoved the 570 horsepower engine into with really crappy tires and brakes. All right, here is the Amakua S. As you can see, it has some amazing new S badges on the uh, the rear, the side, and the front. I mean, those are those are just beautiful. Not much changed here. Uh, the drivetrain, uh, it's still manual four. Interesting choice here. You would think you would go clutched LSD, um, and in the future we probably will. But the automatic locker was able to give us the same desired top speed that we were going for, and the cost of engineering and production was a lot less. And material cost of the car. So we decided to go with the automatic locker for this. Um, this is telling us the top speed is going to be 231 miles an hour now. 0 to 60 and 7.99. Uh, we did body quality, we bumped up to plus 3. Drivetrains at plus 2. We stuck with the hard long life. 
I don't know, you know, in the future, I don't know if that's still going to be the best option, but we'll look at that uh, as we go. 15 inch wheels. Went with the solid disc. This was a huge improvement. Uh, we still have severe brakes fade, but it's, it's much better than it was. Uh, 15 quality on aerodynamics. It's the only way we can ever dream to compete right now, uh, even though we're still going to be really, really short. This, uh, you know, for example, th this 231 it's showing is still 10 miles an hour less than Dotmer velocity hit in 1950. Nothing upgraded here. Same thing with suspension. I mean, tech hasn't really gone that far in the last 10 years. As you can see, we were able to increase the prices on all the models. Uh, this time, we're, we're just planning on selling a few of our S model with the regular versions making up the bulk of our sales. But it does estimate we're gonna sell about 141. All right, now for the test. miles an hour <sighs> still short of uh, Datmer velocity and in, in Razo um, but we'll take it a, a huge improvement uh, we went from 180 miles an hour to 235 miles an hour uh, what I did not discuss earlier was when we did this ocean engine refresh uh, part of what we did was expand the factory I, I believe we went to a small two. Uh, so we're, we have a five month factory downtime. Uh, and since we only have one engine, that means our entire company is shut down for five months, which is why we set up this stock manager here. Uh, and as you can see, we're, we're going pretty well here. We're building up the inventories um, to get us through those five months. So we're about a year away from launch. Um, loan payments about the same. We've been able to stockpile a little bit of cash. Uh, you know, close to four million, but we're starting to lose money. And the reason we're losing money here is is the stockpile of the cars. So you know, I don't think there's a sum of how many you produced. So this is how many we delivered. This is how many sales we have. So we're selling, you know, about 150 still, 155, which is this, but we're producing, you gotta add each of these up. So that's 110, 77, so you're 187 and 20 more, so 207. So we're making 207 a month, meaning we're putting 50 cars away into inventory. That's why we're losing all this money. Uh, we're also working the factories pretty hard to build up the inventory. We're at 2.3 shifts for the factory and the engine, part of the reason we upgraded the size, the engine's at 2.6 shifts. Now the other thing that we did at the start of 1958, as you can see, aluminum became available. This is full aluminum for the engines. So we thought this was a good time. Let's go ahead and revamp our engine. We don't have much money. We're, you know, still at 11 million company value, 4 million here. This takes a long time to do. Engines are not quick development. So one thing you can now do uh, that we are is make a prototype engine. So this is an engine that's not going to go into a factory. It's really just research, but you're setting up the base for what your engine will be. Uh, so you can, you know, keep making your old engine into the 
same trims or even new trims you have while this is in development. The development costs are a lot less as you're not tooling a factory, you're not expanding a factory. Uh, so that's what we did. This The new Ocean 2 engine, uh, the base and the, and the S, were going to be aluminum based. We're not going to go into too many details until the next video. But one thing we did have to consider when making these was the future of the company. These, these were engines that we need to use for a long, long time. I, I mean, we're most likely not going to make a new engine uh, until the LZ or, well, Magnesium probably won't be there. Uh, that's That'd be too far ahead of, of schedule. Um, but that's a long time. So we got to think turbos. You know, are, are we going to be able to fit this engine and turbos into either a car we currently have or future cars? And, you know, if you go with a big engine, uh, an engine like Dotmer and Razo did, those are great when a car can fit it. But it can really restrict you going forward into what you can put it into. Um, the engine placement. You know, how many, how many cars have a mid or a rear engine 14 liter? Um, that, it's just, I don't know. I don't know if that's possible. So we looked at a lot of those things. Um, and that's what we based our, our new engine design on. I just wanted to show this screen for anyone that's never done a prototype engine. Uh, this is something I learned on the Discord forums and thought it was one of the coolest things they added to the game. It's just a simple ability to do this. So after I made the engine, you go into here and there's different approaches. People have different philosophies on how you should do this. Generally, this is what I do. I, I put the tooling process reliability way down to cut on the engineering time. Uh, in, in my normal campaigns, this usually is like 60 months, not 96. The reason I did 96 is just this specific campaign, the way we're playing it, this engine was not going to come out in time for the 1960 car. Uh, so I figured, let's just have it go halfway, or almost, you know, more than halfway, two-thirds of the way into the 1960s, and then hopefully it'll be ready for that last facelift for the 1970 launch car. Uh, so that's why this number is high, is because it can't be. Um, but pressure and funding, I like to go down on. You don't want to spend, if you have a lot of cash, that's one thing. So if you've got a booming company in the 1980s or 90s, and you're making a, a new engine, um, yeah, sure, you could put this up to 50, because you've got 200 million, 300 million, you don't care. When you've got 3.7 million in the bank and a company value of 11, every little dollar matters. Uh, the pressure you want low so you can, you know, get the knowledge, the tech pool of, uh, of the engineering behind this. So to me, this was just a good mix, especially for this scenario. Um, when you go to sign off, it's going to, when you didn't assign a factory, it's going to ask you and you just confirm yes. Uh, and that's it. And you know, you either take a loan or you don't, but it's the nice thing is without the tooling, if you don't take a loan, so like this, I believe this is correct. Uh, this 15 million is spread over 96 months. Um, so the impact per month is not that big. Even though I don't have 15 million right now, I'm not going to do a loan on this. Here we are with the launch. Uh, just checking out, checking out uh, technology that's going to be coming up soon. Magnesium, not really sure if that's going to help us or not. Uh, maybe with just sales and prestige. Semi-clad, that's going to be huge. Kind of sad we didn't have that for, for 1960. Is I have a feeling Dotmir and Razo might have that in their cars already. Uh, actually, a very good feeling they have semi-clad in their cars already. Uh, but like I said, we're, we're going to do what we can. We're happy with our uh, new achievement of 235 miles an hour. And we just got to see if we can sell any here. Uh, you can see we just launched. <laughs> We're in a very amazing financial position with $41,500 cash. I mean, that's just, who wouldn't want to give our company a loan? Uh, 20.6 million company valuation at launch. Uh, so that's improved. We were down to about 11, uh, halfway into the 50s. Credit score C. So if we do need a loan here, we'll be able to take one. Um, 
you know, as you can see, the, the reason for this huge loss, we had a $6.4 million engine construction cost uh, and a 1.2 car construction. We still have that loan payment of 556. You know, an engineering of 500,000, there was no income. We ran out of cars to sell. So that, I, I was really worried we weren't going to, or we would have to take that extra loan, which is not easy to do when you don't have a lot of money. So anyways, let's see. We've got uh, pre-orders here, 429, 302. We got 34 pre-orders for the S. And there we go. Okay. Wow. We sold over 180. So we're going to have to up the factory shifts because we're at two. And we sold almost exactly what we can make, but we have five months of production we're behind. So we just have to up this a little bit, 2.1, 2.2, to get us to where we need to be. As you can see, we raised the prices. The base models of 24.9, 26.4. Our super is now 39.9. Um, we're actually making money on it, 100%, 107% margin. These are even higher at 122 and 129 for the Roadster. So we're making 1.27 million. That's a huge relief. I mean, we we had no money. We had very low company valuation. We were on the brink of bankruptcy, uh, not existing anymore. Uh, so this this gives us some breathing room. Uh, but we we did take. I'll correct myself. We did take a small loan. Um, we so we we doubled our loan payments to a million dollars now. Uh, and to, because. Because of our cash situation, we saw that we were crashing. We cut our marketing to pretty much nothing. Um, we knew that was gonna be short term. We're gonna increase, we're gonna take this million, the 1.3 million we have now, we, we might go a couple months and, and get a little bit in the bank just for safekeeping. And then we're gonna jack up the marketing again because you cannot let this go. Uh, and that should go well with the economy taking off here. Engineering, same thing. We had to reduce all of our engineering and we're going to have to pump that back up. So this this is a false number. This million dollars you see, if we just let it go, that's gonna crash because we have no marketing and the future of our company is not gonna do well with no engineering. Uh, so this will change. Uh, hopefully we can stay stable for a while as uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep doing facelifts into the future. Uh, but here it is. We, we sold eight cars at 235 miles per hour. Okay, to touch on the future of Shark Motorsport, we do have the Ocean 2 that is on track to come out in December 1966. This will give us about three years to do a quick facelift and get it into the launch for the 1970 fastest car. Now, we do plan on coming out with a, our first new model in the 60s. We're not 100% sure what we're going to do. Um, you know, it, it is... There's not many mid or rear engine cars that are available. And we will most likely not have turbochargers available either. Looking at our research here... Uh, well, mechanical fuel injection is actually coming out in four years. That could be big. But yeah, I mean, look at this. We're <laughs> turbochargers 1975, and we, we've got 0.86 tech pull in turbos. That ain't happening. Uh, we will have it for the 70s. So for, for our 1980 car, we'll have turbos of some sort. Not sure what kind of turbo, but we'll have a turbo. Um, let's see what else is coming out. I, you know, the engineering time behind mechanical fuel injection is huge. Mm, and we're only going to have three years when our engine launches. So I, again, I don't know if this will be able to make it. I don't know if we can engineer that in three years into that prototype engine. That, that'd be very tough. Let's see. Mid-transverse, 
couple years away from that. We, ooh, if we got a mid-engine car, that could be out by 1970. And five-speed manuals coming out soon. This, along with, as I said before, the semi-clad. This will be huge. This will help us a lot. You know, so we're going to have to look into, depending on how this stabilizes our mini, money situation here, um, where we're going to put tech pool. Because we're going to, have to, we're going to have to put some in. Are we going to go for things that are going to be best for the future of the company or things that will help us immediately? Uh, for instance, the semi-clad or the fuel system. The other thing I wanted to talk about real quick was the marketing and your sales depending on what you're making. Normally I do sports car companies that cover a wide range. Um, anywhere from family sports, family sports premium, fun premium, light sports, muscle, sport, even into the GT. You know, I, I cover a lot of this when I have a big company going, as do a lot of people when they play. So you don't look at everything that's specifically in the markets, you know, so you, you might look at, okay, what do I specialize in? And that's what I'm going to put mar you know, money into. Um, you're going to sell cars everywhere, right? Well, this campaign is a little different. Um, you know, you, you look at Havasia here, which normally I sell a ton of cars to Havasia. Uh, we're, we're selling 200 cars a month total. You know, if you add this up here, you got... 13 of our 200 car sales only 13 cars are being sold to Havasia and we're advertising a pretty good amount there for 13 cars uh, we might need to relook at where we're putting our money now for Winia this is a different story you look at this you know this this looks like it's the bulk of our car sales um, It uh, looks like over 90 cars. So, you know, probably close to 100 cars is out of Fruinia. So this is definitely worth putting money into. It's half of our sales. That means Dulua's got to be high, too. Um, even though we just started in Dulua eight years ago with the facelift. You know, we're, we're at 60 cars or so. That's not bad. And our awareness is not that great. Uh, compared to for well even for Winia, it's we did put a lot of money into Deluma. Yeah, so just one thing to look at when you're doing your campaigns is how many cars are you actually selling in places, and how much money are you spending marketing them. You can save yourself a lot of money by not marketing if you don't need to. Um, as you can see, we're not even selling a single car into Arcana. And it's, it's it's not because we're not advertising, even though we're not. We wouldn't, even if we were advertising. At least not right now. Maybe we'll sell a car or two in the future. 